college football conference title weekend, and it could be wild, or it might just all play out the way it sits now. Here's how that is. Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, they're in the top four. There's how the playoff would look if it started tomorrow. It'd be the Bulldogs against the Bearcats and the Wolverines against the Crimson Tide. Guess what? The playoff doesn't start tomorrow. We still have plenty of scenarios that could play out. And here to help us with that, we now welcome in Cover 3 podcast host Chip Patterson, who wants to see things get a little chaotic. Chip, we actually, the graphics department actually came up with this for you. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it, man. You know, it's. Uh, you know, you know, you know, yeah. That's right. You know, Elmo's filled with wonder. I wonder what we will discover. You know, this is Elmo's world. Oh, they, they, they went even a little bit further. They grabbed a couple more. Okay, nice. Nice. Are, are there any we've, more, Noah? We've got, we some, we've got some boring scenarios. We've got some chaotic scenarios. Like, Jeremy, I tell you, I have run the Chipolytics. Sportsline does a great job with 10,000 simulations, but the Chipolytics take a lot of things into consideration, including selection committee behavior. So let's, let's dig into it. Yeah, Chip, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to see some chaos this weekend just to keep the selection committee up late on Saturday night and into Sunday. But let's start with the status quo. What happens if all the favorites win this weekend? If all the favorites in the conference championship game win, the way that I see it playing out, of course, uh, Georgia being favored is going to end up at number one. Michigan will hold its spot at number two. I do think that Cincinnati ends up getting an opportunity to move into that three spot. And this is where it becomes interesting because what do you do with Alabama? It's taken a second loss, but that second loss came to the number one team. I think that Alabama is not only out, but I think that Alabama would end up coming in behind a one loss Notre Dame. Notre Dame with one loss, Alabama with two losses, and then and Oklahoma State favored against Baylor. That would give Oklahoma State a 12-1 and record, a Power 5 conference champion. The debate would be Notre Dame versus Oklahoma State, but I think that 12th win, the conference championship, and doing it against a Baylor team twice that the committee respects, I think that would be very impactful. So if all the favorites win, I see it as uh, Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma State. Now let's have some fun. Alabama, Iowa, Houston, Baylor, all underdogs this weekend. Chip? What happens if all the underdogs win? And the funny thing is some of this, I think, is possible. And we can get into that as we get closer to predictions. But if all of the underdogs win, and that includes Iowa beating Michigan, which to me is the big wrinkle here, then I think that Alabama beating Georgia, you go up to number one. Because everybody is a, in the Power Five Conference, at least, would have one loss, and you would have a conference championship and that win being against Georgia. So I go Alabama, Georgia. This is one of the paths for Notre Dame to be able to get in if all of these underdogs uh, go out there and win if Iowa, if Baylor, if Alabama. So Notre Dame would end up checking in uh, at number three. And then I do think that Baylor, while it would have two losses, I think that it would end up winning that debate against mm. Michigan, which would also have two losses, and Ohio State, which would also have two losses because Baylor would have a conference championship. Wow, okay, so Michigan is the one that's on the outside looking in if the underdogs come in and Baylor gets in. Okay, so my dad, who's a huge Notre Dame fan, says there is no way, no matter what, that Notre Dame is going to get in. The committee will not allow it. One team who is in wait-and-see mode are the Irish. All they can do is watch and hope. What do they need to happen in order for them to make the playoff, Chip? Well, first of all, they've got a head coach, we believe, and that's a great start because now we're not going to have any uncertainty. Selection committee said that they take all availability, coaches and players, into consideration when evaluating these teams. If Marcus Freeman ends up getting this full-time job, as widely reported and expected, then that at least eliminates that concern. But on the field, the most realistic path, Georgia beats Alabama decisively. You know, we're talking like no two-loss Alabama is even a discussion. And Baylor beats Oklahoma State. So boom, we're out Oklahoma State. The threat of that 12-1 and Oklahoma State, which is one of the biggest threats to Notre Dame, get them out of there. So if you're a Notre Dame fan, you want Georgia to whoop up on Alabama. You want Baylor to beat Oklahoma State. And you need one of two results. The first one would be Iowa beating Michigan. This is very familiar to what we just did with the all underdog scenario. The second one is that Houston beats Cincinnati so badly that the committee overreacts. Now, that could be problematic because, as we all know, Notre Dame's one loss is to Cincinnati. But if the committee really wants to twist itself in knots, then I do think it's possible if Houston runs it up on the Bearcats 
for the committee to say notre dame was a better team at the end of the season than it was when it lost to cincinnati and that is a true statement it is also true that the strength of schedule and the opponents were much more favorable at the end of the season but the results show a notre dame team that improved over time so you need uh, Georgia to get Alabama out the paint. You need Baylor to get Oklahoma State out the paint. And then you need one of two results, Iowa doing the same to Michigan or a Houston over Cincinnati result that sends the Bearcats out and paves the way for Notre Dame, even with a loss to Cincinnati, to sneak in. We need that meme now where it's all the numbers kind of going back and forth, and I'm just sitting there looking at them because, Chip, you lost me there, but um, I, I, trust, I trust the path that you're setting out there. Okay, so let's talk about if Alabama loses – Michigan loses, Oklahoma State loses, they all become two lost teams. So of mm. the two lost teams, who has the best chance to be the first two lost team to make the playoff? Alabama. Um, and that would be a scenario where Alabama plays Georgia close and the committee, which has slated the Crimson Tide, even with its one loss at number two or number three in the country and really believed that Alabama is a, a strong team. I think that Alabama needs some help but Alabama is the team with the best chance. And then to me, the next best chance to be able to make it are the Baylor Bears. And that's because Oklahoma State at number five is a team that the committee really respects. You get to do that thing where you avenge your regular season loss, something that was very important to Georgia making the, uh, the college football playoff after it was able to beat Auburn again uh, after losing to Auburn earlier in the season in the 2017 season. And so if Baylor was able to avenge it's lost to Oklahoma State, I would say that that's the best chance for a two-loss team to win on conference championship Saturday and get in. The only team that I can imagine losing and getting into the college football playoff is a two-loss team. And I, I do believe, by the way, it would be controversial, especially for whoever ends up number five, but it still would be the Alabama Crimson Tide. The best part is what we've seen this college football season is it is not out of the realm of possibility. It might be a long shot, but we've seen so much crazy football in this college football season that it's not out of the realm of possibility that a two-loss team makes the playoffs. Lastly, Chip, I mean, come on, chaos is fun, but reason usually wins out. So give us your college football playoff prediction ahead of the title games this weekend. Jeremy, you asked for my prediction. You didn't ask for reason because I've got Alabama <laughs> winning the SEC championship. OK, as this, there's too many people that seem so confident that Georgia is going to be able to do this. And I've watched too much Alabama. I've been working for CBS as my 11th or 12th season. Covered the Crimson Tide for much of the Nick Saban era. Seen this movie. Not going to doubt them. So I'm going to do Alabama at one after beating Georgia. Georgia's not going to go anywhere. I put them to two. This does end up resulting in Michigan, who I think it's going to win comfortably against Iowa, getting bumped down to number three. And I think Cincinnati takes care of business. You know, the way that it has been able to refocus here at the end of the season, I think at the Nippert Stadium crowd, a stadium where Desmond Ritter has not lost, uh, as a starting quarterback, I believe that Cincinnati will be able to get it done. That leaves Baylor, Baylor, because I've got the Bears winning the Big 12 championship uh, on the outside looking in at number five. And Notre Dame, which will enjoy its time watching football from the couch rooting for chaos. I don't think that Notre Dame gets enough chaos and it ends up at number six. Depending on what happens this weekend, Chip, we already have the meme set for Monday. It's you with the coffee cup sitting in the room on fire just saying, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. That might happen on Monday. Thanks for embracing the chaos with me, Chip. Cover 3 podcast host and college football analyst Chip Patterson talking about scenarios, playoff scenarios based on what might happen this weekend. For all this chatter and plenty more, check out Chip alongside Tom Fornelli on the Cover 3 podcast. We'll be discussing scenarios and everything else that is going on in the college game. And there is a lot to discuss. Download and follow the Cover 3 wherever you get your podcast audio. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.